Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Adrián Perdieguez from the Performance and Algorithm Research Group. And I'm going to present my research, Achieving Performance in Dexascaler. So during the next 10 minutes, I will explain you how we chase performance portability across um, DOA supercomputers and how we pursue it in an efficient way. So if you attended my last GR presentation, this picture may sound familiar to you. So nowadays, um, supercomputers or modern supercomputers are based on accelerators from different vendors, for example, Permatter, Aurora, or Frontier. Um, so uh, applications or scientific applications must be uploaded to GPUs to get performance. And there are two ways of doing this. Some people prefer to use a portable language like OpenMP Target or Cocos, while other programmers prefer to have a specific backend for each vendor. For example, CUDA for NVIDIA, HIP for MED, or SQL for Intel. So in any case, we have, or there is a tuning stage for every new supercomputer in which we have to find the optimal values for the performance parameters of our applications. Um, so this is the objective of our research. We want applications to perform optimally across the all platforms. Um, current applications or uh, exascale applications, the tuning of these applications is very expensive in terms of computational resources. So we provide a methodology based on machine learning that reduces the cost of this tuning. So we can uh, tackle the performance portability challenge in an easy way. So starting on the left side of the slide, imagine that our application has 10 parameters and each parameter can take up to 10 values. This creates a search space of 10 billion possible configurations. And of course, we cannot exhaustively explore all of them. So this is an optimization problem. We want to find the configuration that minimizes the runtime. And there are different search approaches to do this. For example, one is random search. We randomly um, evaluate configurations until we find a good one. However, uh, the most promising approach mm, nowadays is something called Bayesian optimization. In the graph, we can see the evolution of the best runtime um, found by random search in orange and by Bayesian optimization in blue. And we can see how Bayesian optimization clearly outperforms random search, right? So why Bayesian optimization is so good? So because it only evaluates the smallest but most meaningful set of configurations. On the right side, we see its workflow. We start with a really small data set of random um, configurations. And with this data set, we train a surrogate model. It's usually a Gaussian process. This surrogate model predicts the runtime for a given configuration. And we pass this to, acquisition, to an acquisition function that selects the next configuration to be explored. And we do this over and over through a number of iterations until getting the solution, right? So we can use Bayesian optimization for HPC tuning on a given platform. And there are two types of uh, performance parameters. The ones that describe the search, for example, how many computing nodes I have available for my execution, and the ones that must be optimized. For example, the MPI configuration that minimizes the runtime of my application. So we can describe any HPC tuning case in terms of these performance parameters. We can create a Bayesian optimization search. We run the search for some number of iterations, and we get the optimal values for these parameters on, the, on a given supercomputer. And Bayesian optimization is not something new. People have been working on this for many years. But when we apply this for performance portability, we find or some challenges show up. The first challenge is, should I run a fresh search on every new supercomputer? Because Bayesian optimization is cheaper than other um, approaches, but it still has a cost. The second challenge is, um, if you recall from the Bayesian optimization workflow, is inherently sequential. And it does not, or it doesn't hurt, oh, sorry, it doesn't harness the all parallel resources that we have in current supercomputers, right? And the third challenge is um, Bayesian optimization may not be well suited for more than 20 parameters. And unfortunately, this is very common in exascale applications. So I work on these three challenges to allow 
Bayesian to use uh, Bayesian optimization for performance portability. So let's start with the first challenge. Um, let me show you how we can avoid running a fresh search on every new supercomputer. Imagine that we want to move our application from per matter to frontier. Uh, option A, we can run a fresh search in frontier and this takes 218 evaluations. Option B, we use transfer learning. So even though Frontier and Permatter, they are different, their architectures same, uh, share some similarities, right? So we can use the model that we use in Permatter for starting the search in Frontier. So this is gonna bias the, the search to certain regions, and this is going to accelerate this process. So in this case, it took 103 samples rather than 218. So we presented this uh, supercomputer 2022 conference uh, for a real-time time-dependent density functional theory application when we move it from CORI to multiple nodes in per matter. And with our transfer learning approach for performance portability, we reduce 46% uh, the time compared to a fresh search using regular Bayesian optimization. The second challenge is that uh, Bayesian optimization is um, inherently sequential and it does not harness parallel resources. So if you see on the left side of the slide, the, I have the conventional steps for Bayesian optimization. We start with a surrogate model. Based on this surrogate model, the acquisition function selects one configuration and only one configuration to be the next candidate to be evaluated. Then we evaluate this uh, configuration and we retrain the model and we go so, for, uh, so on and so forth. But the thing is, if we want to harness parallel resources, we would like to have what we call multipoint acquisition function on the right. So each time that I call the acquisition function, we would like to select several candidates to be um, evaluated in, in parallel. So mathematically or computationally, this is not easy to achieve. So in this case, we suggest an heuristic called speculation or uh, um, the speculation strategy in which rather than evaluating the configuration that acquisition function selects, we speculate its runtime. So we buffer a bunch of configurations and once the buffer is full, then we evaluate them in parallel. And this gets a huge acceleration compared to a regular Bayesian optimization while it keeps a similar um, quality. So the third challenge is that Bayesian optimization may not be well suited for more than 20 parameters or 20 dimensions. And this happens because the one, the course of dimensionality. So when we increase um, the dimensionality, also the space goes exponential with this and the solutions are not as good. And the other thing is efficiency wise. So the more dimensions means the more data we need for training our surrogate model. And for example, considering the complexity of training Gaussian processes, which is uh, n to the three, this thing, I mean, this makes things super slow. So we provide a methodology that analyzes the interdependence between the parameters that we want to explore. And this creates a dependence graph. So depending on how strong or how weak are these connections in the graph, we can partition this graph into several lower dimensional searches that can be carried on in parallel. So we apply, for example, this methodology to a real-time time-dependent DFT that people wanted to uh, migrate to exascale. And yeah, we were able to succeed in a search where uh, modern auto-tuners um, challenge it to, to complete. So as conclusion, we can use Bayesian optimization for performance portability, but this is, this is not plug and play. We have identified three important challenges that we overcome with a performance portability methodology. And we use this performance uh, portability methodology for targeting material science applications, but we can use it for any other scientific application. So if you are interested, please reach out to me. Thank you. <laughs>